You're listening to DraftKings Network. Folks, this year the big game is not just for football fans. It's time to go all in on food. Tums and DraftKings have teamed up to create a free-to-play pool so you can get in on the action and keep on snacking. There's a share of $10,000 up for grabs. To take home the cheddar, just make the right picks about America's game day grub. Play free in the Tums Prop Bites pool on DraftKings to score big without the burn. Learn more at TumsPropBites.com. Eligibility restrictions apply. Void where prohibited. See DraftKings.com for details. This is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugats Podcast. All right, excellent work. Uh, the what happened? five and thirty-nine <laughs> talk is what they just yelled in my ear. I just heard it. Talk, yeah. talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's your life, man. Talk. <laughs> the five and thirty-nine Pistons beat Oklahoma City by sixteen at home yesterday. Any given Sunday, <laughs> the uh, the city of Detroit. Surely is thrilled today. <laughs> Under any other circumstance, Dugats, except what happened yesterday, I tell you, Detroit's playing in that game and they lose by three points, 34-31, and the, the city of Detroit is thrilled with the season that they had. Mm-hmm. Just delighted with an amazing season. But when you gag that game up the way they did. And you know how much I dislike that we've made sports about blaming people instead of crediting them. But in those games yesterday, the losers deserve the blame for being maximum losers. And I'm stunned that America, which is divided on everything, evidently today, a historic day, is in unison on we're all pro-field goal. We've never we've never loved field goals so much. Jess, are you going to be with me? Because I'm going to go the other way on this. I haven't heard much of anybody do anything except crush Dan Campbell for playing the way he has all season and, according to Next Gen Stats, doing the things that had the best probabilities because this year Stugatz in plus territory, yep. they went for it on fourth and three or shorter 20 of 24 times and converted 17 of the 20. They're good at that. Dan Campbell wants to scare you on offense, wants you to be backpedaling. You can't control that Reynolds is going to suddenly drop the ball. There's a time and a place, Dan, and you have to go by feel of the game. You do. You just have to go. Occasionally, Dan, you have to go by the feel of the game. And at 24-10, to they've scored a touchdown second half. You want to give your team a three-score lead. And to not go for the field goal in that spot, to not go for the field goal later in the second half, that's a terrible job. I'm okay. sorry by Dan Campbell. All right. So let me let me come at this another way, okay, because we can argue about this. And uh, I don't have a ton of conviction about what I'm saying to you, but I'm going to set up the argument on the other side because most people are going to say, we'll go for it all the time. No, nah, it's different going for it when you don't have behind the safeties to play with. You're close to the end zone, fourth and three from the from the five yard line it's more difficult because you can't get beyond the safeties the when you play reward versus risk going forward on fourth and three you want the option of a 60 yard touchdown because you want to be able to use the whole field but what i would say to you about this that i think is being missed is the following a lot of people a are presuming in these situations that the field goals are going to be made First of all, at which point, if it gets missed, you're going to be the first one there. Campbell, you played that way all season. Why are you a coward in that spot? (laughs) Because we have the results now. But the second one, I think, is just as interesting because this this part this part is is something that as I'm watching these games, I wonder why it's not taken into consideration. If Campbell kicks in the kicks the field goal to tie. Under what circumstance in that second half did you have them stopping San Francisco when San Francisco wanted to score? Under any circumstances, because all San Francisco did. Like, when we're sitting here talking about coaching decisions, why isn't anyone talking about the fact that at half, whatever the adjustments were, Detroit couldn't score anymore, and all San Francisco did was go up and down the field. The best unit I saw yesterday, Stugatz, of any kind, was the Detroit Lions offensive line in that first half. Over the last four weeks, San Francisco has allowed five yards of carry to running backs. Right. Four weeks, they allow the ball to be run. 
What makes you think if Detroit had tied the game that San Francisco wouldn't have just kept scoring? They were doing it the entire second half. To me, the worst thing that happened in that game of any kind, Stugat, was at the very end. And we love the last stuff. This part is super weird to me because I thought we always choose the last thing to question, not the things before that. Everyone's talking field goals. And the fact that they ran the ball on third down and then had to use one of their timeouts and couldn't keep all three timeouts, that was the biggest coaching decision mistake in the entire game by Uh, Dan Campbell. I understand. But the two field goals, Dan, one puts them up three scores. He did it at the end of the first half. The other one ties the game. Uh, It ties the game. I don't think, especially if this is your your take on things, you don't get to gloss over. He did it at the end of the first half. Right. So he gave you both versions of what you're supposed to do. He did go by feel. He was like, okay, I, I don't want to run the risk of them having the ball coming out to start the second half Correct. and us just being up 14. Let me go by feel here. So he gave you both examples that you're asking for, and he saw where that got him, and he decided for a more aggressive tack the second you, time. You could argue that backfired on him because you saw how quickly they made that 17-point lead disappear. You could almost argue he should have gone for it. You saw it. It paid off, and it, it hurt them in the second and, half. And I understand that Wilkes made defensive adjustments, but – it wasn't adjustments that turned that game around. It was luck because three consecutive drives from the Lions, this is how it went. Josh Reynolds drop. Pass was a little behind him, but it hit him in the hands. Gibbs fumble. Josh Reynolds drop. Niners got lucky, too. No, wait. Mike, yes. Mike, you're Off forgetting. Off the helmet catch. Well, and the that one. pass. Yes. That one. That was the game. Should have been like, picked. That yeah, but was I'm, the I'm, game. That, that was insane. That was a, an incredible play, and I understand that they picked the flag up afterwards. If Ayuk doesn't make that catch, maybe the flag stays down. So I, I, I understand that was a tremendous play, but I'm talking about they couldn't stop Detroit. And then they got three consecutive stops, and it wasn't because they were particularly awesome. It's because they got lucky. Let's play some sound here from Dan Campbell. He is beating, he's getting beat up, and he's saying, I know this is part of the gig. It's how it works. He's crushed, obviously. Uh, and uh, Chris Cody has been fairly singing all morning around here. Everybody loves the aggressive coach until he's just a little too aggressive. Let's listen to Dan Campbell. Sometimes you can only say so much, you got to live it, unfortunately. You got to get your heart ripped out, which we did. And it's a lesson learned. And look, I told those guys, this may have been our only shot. Do I think that? No. Do I believe that? No. However, I, I know how hard it is to get here. I, I'm well aware. And it'll be, it's going to be twice as hard to get back to this point next year than it was this year. That's, that's the reality. And if we don't have the same hunger and the same work, which is a whole other thing, once we get the off season, um, then we got no shot of getting back here. I don't care how much better we get or what we add or what we drive. It's irrelevant. Um, it's going to be tough. Everybody in our division is going to be loaded back up, and uh, you know you're not hiding from anybody anymore. Everybody's going to want a piece of you, and uh, which is fine, you know, which is fine. But um, so it's hard. You want to make the most of every opportunity, and we, we had an opportunity, and we just couldn't close it out. It's, it does. It stings. It stings. That nose is red. Why? The reddest nose I've ever seen. <laughs> He's kind of right, too. It's not usually – usually when someone makes their debut, it signals an error, especially if you look at the trajectory of season over season success that Dan Campbell's had there. But he's right. You look within their own division – the Packers look to be like a problem yep. going forward. Mm-hmm. Caleb Williams is probably entering that division. Minnesota was hamstrung by a bunch of injuries this year. That's still good. It, it's not often that you find yourself conveniently because of the way the Cowboys lose in the first round. There were a lot of things that broke their way this year, including a big lead in that game. It's hard to get back there. And Man Campbell actually had the right perspective. There are a couple of things uh, that I want to get to from that game because uh, San Francisco beat you even though Kittle did nothing, which I'm always stunned when Kittle does nothing. He blocked. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) He's like that, though. He's boomer bust, George Kittle. Like, it's weird. He has really good games and then just nothing burgers. 
The sequence that Mike is talking about there, fourth down drop by Reynolds, dropped interception off of a face mask. I want you to understand how weird it is in one-on-one coverage to throw a football 50 yards downfield, hit someone in the face mask with it, and have it pop up in a way that's catchable. It's 50 <laughs> yards. In stride. It's 50, it's 50 <laughs> yards. It's not, it's not a normal thing for the ball to pop up that way when you've thrown it 50 yards. Think about the... the Think about the way the ball is shaped and the way a face mask is shaped. And if I threw it 50 yards 50 times, do you think I'm getting that bounce to Ayuk? Again, one more time. Then you get the third down drop by Reynolds. And I don't know that anyone feels worse than that dude today. Anyone, I mean, maybe Zay Flowers. Definitely Zay Flowers. I mean, <laughs> I, I do feel bad about the fourth down discourse because a lot of it is like, don't blame Dan Campbell, blame Josh Reynolds because yeah. he dropped an easy one, and and it is it is a team loss. I, I feel bad for all of them. Uh, you feel the worst for Zay Flowers today, though. If you're going to feel bad oh for someone God. out there, yes, worst thirty seconds a player probably could have playing that position in an AFC Championship game. Let's go through what happened there because uh, Stugatz, and I'm not someone who generally says uh, the cliche of experience matters in those situations, Mm -hmm. but the two teams that coughed it up don't have any experience in those situations, and Detroit had one guy who does have experience in those situations, Goff, and it wasn't his fault. He can't also catch the ball. He made he made the throws that should result in the conversion. Lamar can catch the ball. Lamar can catch the ball. I thought that would have been an 80-yard touchdown if he had broken the ankle tackle. It was close. It was almost. It would have been the best play we've ever seen. Well, Romo, Romo said it was anyway. It still was a great play. He needed but. to clarify it was the best 13-yard play he's ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you a Tony Romo question? We I did this like very briefly with Stu Gatz. I got less football that will come out soon, so this is not a retread. But I discovered something happening yesterday with Tony Romo where essentially everyone is over Tony Romo. Except Chris Cody, who yeah. tweeted out that he is in the yeah. best broadcast team that there is. Everyone everywhere in the world yesterday was pooping yeah. all over Tony Romo saying, I cannot believe they better have an opt-out with this guy. There better be an option to get out of his contract. This guy is not doing a good job. And then Chris, like 20 minutes later, is like, this is the best broadcast team I've ever heard. I think that everybody would want this team. I'm totally with Chris. I mean, they're just so good. I think everyone is just completely wrong. Like, there's no debate about it. Jim Nance is fantastic. There, there is debate. No, there's Clearly. not. Well, it's happening right now. No, people are wrong. <laughs> Everyone's wrong. Yeah. Tony Romo, his enthusiasm, the info. I mean, Greg Olson, I'm not saying Boom. Greg Olson isn't also good, but just the height of it, it's just, it's fantastic. I miss the predictive analysis. He used to do things that kept it exciting in the bedroom. He was Remember how we all fell in love with Tony Romo? It was, here's what's going to happen. This When's the last time he's done that? <laughs> Everyone knows it's not Valentine's Day without the flowers, so whatever you do, don't be like me. Don't forget the flowers. Beat the Valentine's Day rush and order early at 1-800-Flowers.com. Right now at 1-800-Flowers, you can get up to 40% off a beautiful, gorgeous bouquet of -of one-of-a-kind arrangements that are guaranteed to wow your significant other. Please do not be like me. Don't put it off. Delivery dates are limited. Get up to 40% off today at 1-800-Flowers.com slash Dan. That's 1-800-Flowers.com slash Dan. Don Lebatard. Common thread was Stu Gatch chumming it up with Aaron Rodgers. Yep. yep. I so, mean, I met my quarterback. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As you know. As you know. Stu Gatz didn't talk to Aaron Rodgers. Nope. <laughs> Stu Gatz thought country music superstar Jake Owen <laughs> was Aaron Rodgers. They had a 20-minute conversation. Identical twins. I mean, Jesus. Stu Gatz. Listen, mm-hmm. I will never have the relationship with Aaron Rodgers that I have with the guy that I thought was Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> so the way that, I mean, that is the greatest conversation I've ever had with my quarterback. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats. Greg Olson is uh, is the new hot young thing, and uh, Greg Olson may have called his last game because our last game there as part of that broadcast team because that job is supposed to go to Tom Brady for 375 million dollars guaranteed <laughs> Stugatz I saw 
a uh, a sports media agent quoted anonymously, and I don't know why we would talk to these people anonymously, <laughs> but CBS did talk to a sports media agent wow. anonymously, okay. and that agent said the following, every network would want Bill Belichick, he would revolutionize media. What? With the way he prepares. Uh, good play, and, uh, good deep out, and, uh, good coaching. I wonder who the agent was. <laughs> I don't know why you would quote a sports media agent anonymously. Uh, CBS Sports, shame on you. Don't do that. Make those people talk publicly with their name on things if they're going to say things like that. That Bill Belichick is going to revolutionize media? What the bleep are you talking about? That's a sports media agent right there. <laughs> but Belichick is going to be blocked by Tom Brady for the good job. <laughs> for, the, for the job that he wants, Brady's going to be able to decide whether or not he wants to do it for $375 million. And Rich Eisen has suggested that Belichick and Saban team together on something that is the equivalent of the Manning cast, where they just break down games. You have to get them right now because, Stugatz, the game evolves so much that Romo can no longer predict the plays. But Belichick still can. Right. Bel- yes. Belichick can still You just can't like, stop him. What do you think's, what do you think's <laughs> the most absurd offer or, like, email – Bill Belichick's agents got in the last couple weeks. He's got to be getting a lot of stuff like, "Hey, come on this show. You want to be on a reality show? Hey, like I just there's, dude, I'm there's got to be some weird ones out there of just like, "Hey, come revol-. like I don't know. It's got to be wacky. There's got to be that, one email he's where he's going to be on Mask Singer. Where the sure. agent actually <laughs> he's where, going to revolutionize dude, the Mask Singer. The Mask Singer, that's a that's a perfect example of like, "Come on, Bill. Everyone thinks of you. Everyone looks at you this way. You want to change the narrative a little bit?" Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mike Ryan was hoping, Stugatz, he came in today while you were doing God Bless Football, mm-hmm. and he said, do you think Stugatz will surprise us with a take today? Do you think he will stun us? So far, we're 0 for 1. You have taken exactly the tack that he thought you would take with Dan Campbell, wow. where you say, uh, you're the guy who lost the game, therefore you're the reason that they lost. Right. What do you do, Stugatz, with the, uh, the, the mathematical fact that now Next-gen stats say that in both instances, he chose the most probable, best mathematical result to go for it in those situations. And the numbers I just gave you, that in plus territory, they went for it this year 20 of 24 times, and they made it 17 of the 20. So Dan Campbell says that as an assistant coach with New Orleans, he loved how afraid other teams were when Drew Brees was going for it on fourth and short, because of course... Because of course you would be. And in that game, Stugatz, in the first half, I would have trusted the Detroit offense to do anything they wanted. Detroit was I was just gutting. They were gutting San Francisco in a way that was confusing to me to see them up 24-7. And I'm thinking when he kicks the field goal in that situation, I am thinking bury them. Go and bury them. I know you can get up by three touchdowns. 24-7 at half is... I know, but he could have been up 28-7 if he had played the way he has played all season. I understand why he didn't, Stugatz. I understand the inconsistency. You understand what I'm saying when I I say when you're close to the end zone, those three yards are harder to get because you just can't get behind the defense. There's no threat of getting behind the defense. So I understand kicking in that spot because of how congested everything gets in that situation. But Stugatz, nationally, is now responsible for what some people are calling the worst take in the history of sports takes Mm. because Patrick Mahomes has now been in four Super Bowls in the last five years. Go ahead, Andy Reid. I dare you to go 14-2 and and allow Alex Smith to leave Arrowhead Stadium to leave Kansas City. Go ahead, I dare you, because of Patrick Mahomes. Because you think you could turn Patrick Mahomes into something that Alex Smith is not. Alex Smith is a very good quarterback. The audacity. First off, to do this to Alex Smith, who's been very good and loyal to Andy Reid and won him a lot of football games, to dangle Patrick Mahomes out there because Andy Reid thinks he's some sort of quarterback whisperer, which he is not, by the way. He is not, because if he was, Alex Smith would be better than he's been the last few years. So I, I oh, wow. dare. There was, I mean, that's a record for contradiction. It's on Andy Reid. That, that is a, that is I mean, a, the only that reason is, Alex that, Smith that, is not that, better no, than Andy Reid. That sets a world record for Stugatz not paying attention to any of the things he said the sentence before. I've hmm. listened to that Man. Sp- like probably, I don't know, 10 or 15 times Nailed in the last it. like two years. Yeah. 
the end gets me every time. <laughs> it never, it truly never gets old. It's, it's like hot, better than any twist in any movie I've ever watched. Well, thank you. If Alex Smith had that kind of defense, I mean, would have won a few Super Bowls. I mean, how about that? Is uh, Jessica, is that take from Stu Gatz? Because uh, we have a rival now. We have a rival to that, the worst take on the Chiefs there's ever been. I can't get anything right with this team. Here, here is the rival to that, also from the Stu Gatz category. Dan, this time of year, everyone talks about teams they don't want to see come playoff time. I want to talk about a team that I actually want to see come playoff time. I want to see the Chiefs. Oh. I want Patrick Mahomes strolling into my stadium with max confidence. I want Travis Kelsey. I want Taylor Swift. I want the team that lost to Jordan Love. I want the team that lost to Aiden O'Connell. I want the team that trailed 17 to nothing to Jake Browning. That is the team that I would like to face in the playoffs. That's the team, indeed, I, that I would want to face in the playoffs because that team is not very good. I have been saying for years there was something off in Kansas City last year that take didn't go so well for me they won the Super Bowl <laughs> this year it's going very very well they are 10 and 6 they're down the offense is not what it used to be the defense doesn't travel well they're good at home not great on the road I want if I'm a playoff team I don't want Flacco I don't want Mike Tomlin I don't want any of those teams the teams that I want strolling into my stadium Kansas City Chiefs. Shocking. <laughs> I still think the Alex Smith one's like a slightly better. Like it's a it's a one seed. Which is not, bracket. by the way. I don't want Flacco. <laughs> I will say though, I thought like everyone collectively decided, figuratively and literally, two years ago, don't bet against Patrick Mahomes. Like he will do something crazy. He will win games. He is just that good. And I've stuck to my guns. I picked the Chiefs to play in the Super Bowl because I have been I, I'm like the Dan Campbell of picking Patrick Mahomes. I'm like, I'm going to go for it every time and he's going to win so many times that I'll be right more than I'm wrong. And so I feel great today because I knew all along, Stugatz, Patrick Mahomes is just inevitable. The one that hurts today for me, Dan, because I was kind of right about the offense. It's not as good as it used to be. It's not as good as years past. Yeah, they just went to the Super Bowl with 17 points. Yeah, the defense doesn't travel is the one that's going to haunt me. I mean, I mean, that goes right in the teeth of the the cliche that defense does travel. Uh, Sneed is overwhelming, and uh, he had that same sequence that uh, Jessica's talking about with Zay Flowers, which goes like this. First of all, the first part of it, Zay Flowers is wide open, catches the ball, I can't imagine a whole lot of things scarier than trying to tackle that dude in the open field, and Snead did. He, like, tripped him, and, and, but I thought that that was going to be a touchdown, should have been a touchdown because of how much room that he had. Snead tackles him. Snead gets taunted by him. Snead then later in that series knocks the ball out at the half-yard line and frustrates Flowers so much that he cuts his hand while slamming his helmet down and is ineffective the rest of the game. You guys mentioned Patrick Mahomes inevitable, and he made one throw in the second half. But they had 67 yards in the second half. They did nothing in the second half. They didn't points. score. Right. They did, but they did nothing. It's not just not that sc- pass to MVS, Dan, to put the game. Agreed. And I was like, all right, that. That's Agreed. It. I've seen enough. How great was it that that's how the Chiefs made it to the it Super Bowl? A team that has it dropped more passes than everyone, that's had so many balls bounce off of receivers' hands, and that circus catch is what gets them. And into he the Super gets Bowl. to shush the crowd. Like that was like yeah. you, all of you, all season. You shut up. That was not to that crowd. No. That was to the whole season. I Can understand. we also talk about, by the way, the greatest penalty in the history of penalties, where the Ooh. Ravens intentionally forced a first and 10 by yes. giving them 15 yards great. from a first and five. I watched and I was like, this is genius. Well, that's actually, Why does this no, not happen He should have just jumped without aggressively yeah. hitting that's him. Correct. It made no difference. No, it would have been no, five yards. yards. It, it doesn't matter, extra. though. It's the same result. What you wanted was for them to lose those five yards and make him first and 10. If you're going to do it, do it. Because you don't want it to be a ticky-tack thing where then they're like, eh, we don't really need to call that one. Do it. You Mahomes, know what I mean? Mahomes is such a star that history will remember that being the game. 
that that's the dagger, the throw to MBS, but not Al Golden's vindication of Dion Bush intercepting Lamar Jackson as he threw into triple coverage. <laughs> that's why he chose Brad Kaya. The difference uh, in that game was that Kansas City won it in the first half, Stu Gatz. And they won it in the first half, at least in part, because uh, you can feel the differences between those two teams on third down. Mahomes kept converting those in yes. the first half, and you didn't trust Baltimore to convert any of those. Uh, Lamar Jackson had a lot of undisciplined throws that weren't even just the interception, because the only way the Ravens can lose that game is if they did it the way that they did it, turning the ball over in the end zone, around the end zone. Well, is- I mean, triple coverage, when a field goal isn't bad there, no. like take the points, you have the greatest field goal kicker of all time, like triple coverage in that spot. And I know people are isolating, likely getting pushed. That's when the ball's already in Bush's hands. Like that, that was just a terrible decision. And he got away with others because they dropped interceptions. Lamar Jackson and Zay Flowers lost that game. Your, your, MV, your two best offensive players lost that game. Baltimore played its worst offensive game of the season. They scored 10 points, uh, and they were wildly undisciplined because people will talk about Flowers, but I think they will simply forget, Stugatz, that at the end of the first half, it's 14-7, and Van Noy decides, I'm going to headbutt Kelsey. And it's 15 yards, and now you just gave him three points. Right. I mean, Kelsey was setting that one up all game long. Yeah. He was setting it up beforehand by taking Tucker's uh, t- tease before the game. He was trying to irritate them from the moment he came out. Of the- He's been trying to irritate everybody since he started, <laughs> started dating Taylor Swift. It's working. It is working. <laughs> that, guy, that guy wins at everything. Sandbagger. 11 catches on 11 targets against that safety and those linebackers. Don Lebertard. We got Afrini Hardaway. <laughs> oh, Freeney? <laughs> Who was Afrini Hardaway? I was trying to read fast. UD was on the team. Luke Jackson. Bobby Jones. Who the Matrix, Sean Marion. Stugatz. Who is- <laughs> Zoe, Shaq, Smush Parker. Chris Quinn. Hey, wait a minute. D Wade. Wait a minute. Jason Williams, they're all right. I mean, stacked roster. This is the Don Lebertard Show with the Stugatz. When Dan Campbell says how hard it is to get back there and when Jessica says that Patrick Mahomes is inevitable, playoff games obviously hard to win. Road playoff games. Patrick Mahomes won one of those yesterday. The Lions haven't won one of those since 1957. (laughs) It's pretty hard to win the road playoff games. How about this stat from Danny Parkins? This one's going to hurt Jessica. The Chicago Bears have 10 playoff wins in the modern era. Mahomes has 14. <laughs> Double doink hurts them there. <laughs> 10 playoff wins in the entirety of the modern era. But Sugats does have an opinion here, Mike. He does have an opinion that I think that's going to surprise you. Are you ready? He's got the top five most important players or people for the Chiefs in 2023-2024. Are you ready? I don't think he's going to surprise me. I think he is going to surprise you. He is going to surprise you. Number Mike knows me. Number (laughs) number five. Chris Jones. That guy is a menace. Yes. He is really good. That's correct. That is correct. (laughs) Thank Thank you, you, Sugat. That is good analysis. (laughs) Yes, he is big and strong and scary. Number four. Isaiah Pacheco. (laughs) That guy is a menace, man. He runs very hard. (laughs) Number three. Rasheed Rice. (laughs) Their season turned the second he started to be productive. They needed him, and he delivered. I know we talked about the tush push as being an unstoppable play, but I think given what Kelsey did yesterday, Cooper Cup had some of this last year where you saw in the Super Bowl, no look passes to a guy. We knew it was going to him. They didn't have any other receivers, and still it couldn't be stopped by the Bengals. The fact that they couldn't stop Kelsey when they're good at stopping someone like Kelsey. Right. They're, 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 when they have Hamilton and those linebackers covering people, tight ends can't do anything. Mm-hmm. 
and he still had 11 catches on 11 targets. Crazy. Uh, it's not a stoppable thing. When Hamilton hasn't surrendered a touchdown to any other tight ends this season, uh, and he was brilliant in that game, the pass especially to, to Kelsey for that first score was phenomenal. <laughs> uh, knowing how good that Chiefs defense is, obviously, if I told you guys before the game the Chiefs were going to score 17, you'd feel pretty confident Baltimore's winning, yeah, right? Yeah, hot takes. Spags should be talked about as one of the greatest DCs ever. Well, Number two. Sp- Bags. <laughs> Wait a minute. There's some people missing here. Wait a minute. Where you can't. Wow, there's so no far, Kelsey, this is no very Mahomes. surprising. <laughs> and finally, number one most important people or players for the Chiefs in 2023, 2024. Around the Chiefs. Zay Flowers. Around the Chiefs. No Mahomes. No Kelsey. No Sneed. It's only 17 points. That they scored. And Lamar Jackson's gonna get dragged all day today, right? Because your MVP has yes. to be has to be better than that. Mm-hmm. I tried to warn him a week ago. Like last week, he was the greatest quarterback, most important player in the NFL. And this week it started early this morning uh, with several people, not me, but several people ripping Lamar Jackson. Yes. Not you though. Was no. there anyone else watching the game after it was seven seven that was like, oh, it's gonna be a shootout? <laughs> Right. My watch party said that. Yeah. They're like, oh, a little instant classic yeah, on our Ro- hands. Romo said, well, it says shootout, Jim. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Can you explain to me why it is that I kept hearing on the broadcast last night that Purdy's not that athletic? Huh. I'm like, have you seen the Dolphins quarterback run in the open field? Because he dresses like Mr. Rogers. <laughs> yeah. is, that, is that what it is? Put it on the poll, please, Juju, at Lebitard Show. Is Purdy seen as unathletic because he dresses <laughs> like Mr. Rogers? Because he looked pretty quick scooting out of the pocket to me. Oh, like, he, he has not flashed that all season long. Like, occasionally he'll scamper off and you'll be like, oh, that's surprising. But 50-plus rushing yards. What did he have, three fewer than Lamar did yesterday? I would have been less surprised if a UFO landed on the field. (laughs) And it wasn't just, like, the 50 yards. It was him escaping, breaking tackles, looking strong, even though he does not look 6'1 at all out there. The thing that was most impressive to me, Stugatz, about what Spags and the Chiefs' defense did is that they not only – because this this is what neutralized Baltimore. The, Baltimore was excellent, at least in part this year, because they could run the ball and throw it to the tight ends. If I now just make it, hey, Lamar, Zay's your only option – because there were no other options. They're, they're tight ends. The tight ends, he's been A couple able, of catches for Beckham, but there were no other options. There, You're but, right. but Lamar Jackson, I, I told you this last week, the two most efficient plays in the sport this season were Jackson to Likely and Jackson to Andrews. They were non-factors yesterday, the both of them. They, they took the tight ends away. And also, Lamar Jackson, uh, you, you'd take that before the game if you're Kansas City, 50-something rushing yards from Lamar Jackson. Why, why did Gus Edwards only carry three times? Yeah. They, they're, they're a great rushing team. Edwards looked well, good. Can, no, Edwards but, was averaging 6.7 right, yards per carry. He had the, one long one. The last five games that Kansas City has played, they've allowed 3.4 yards per carry. You can't run against them. Nobody can. But nobody they certainly could, couldn't pass on them. It, like, it was a 17-10 to 10 final score. They were, they were always within a spread that said we could keep running the ball here. They have one of the greatest running threats, if not the greatest, at the, posi- at the quarterback position ever. I don't understand it. Everything about their offense was predicated on the run doing that, and then doing well, and it's setting up the pass, and they just had a really strange game plan, too. But you did hear what I said, though, right? They couldn't run against Kansas City, and if I told you before the game, Kansas City's game plan is make the MVP beat you, that's not a great game plan. But the thing is, they they could run against them. Lamar averaged, there were three ball carriers, not counting Zay Flowers in those gimmicky plays. There were three ball carriers. Two of them averaged over six yards per carry. They abandoned the run. They ceased running the ball, and it killed them. Jessica, you said you you wanted to get in here? Well, the Bills ran pretty well against the Chiefs last weekend, too. I, I don't know. I guess uh, my question for Stugatz, just to change the subject slightly here, mm-hmm. when you saw Bob Weir on the sideline of yeah. the NFC Championship game, did yeah. you understand like why people freak out when they see Taylor Swift or no? <laughs> 
Well, I mean, I understand it, but Bob Weir is a classic, old-school San Francisco 49ers fan. In fact, he ended the set in Mexico a couple of years ago with the Niners on the television. Uh, He said, we'll be back in a minute. Uh, Go Niners. And so I do understand uh, why people freak out over Taylor Swift. I was laughing at Taylor Swift being annoyed by the TVs. keep You know, they kept going to her, and she was annoyed by it. She was in the back of the suite. She didn't want to be seen. Give me a break, okay? You're Taylor Swift. You don't want to be seen. You don't want people to make a big deal about you going to these games. Don't go to the games, okay? Don't go to them. I don't, think she, I don't think she was doing that, but yeah. I will say, as someone who, I, I'm not a Swifty, but like I, I like Taylor Swift. I, I am a deadhead. I love Bob Weir. I want both of them, like, camera feed on them the entire I will watch you guys can watch Saban and Belichick I'm watching the Bob Weir Taylor Swift cast <laughs> for the Super Bowl that's all I want Bob looks good huh he looks great yes not gonna lie he's kind of hot thank you really yeah. why are you taking that uh, as a compliment on behalf of Bob Weir I don't see I don't see he's criticized all the time no he's hot this is looking great he, he looks good this, I mean he's a young 80 he uh, oh. <laughs> He looks discombobulated. I mean, Dan, that's the acid. <laughs> Mustache rides from Bob Who said Weir. that? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know, Stugat, why it is that people would be that furious that Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey do seem authentically really happy. <laughs> it's just, it's classic, it's classic American <laughs> hating. They just seem super happy together. They're winning at everything and everyone gets mad about it. <laughs> did you see the good news? I saw a breakdown uh, that someone did for a group of friends because Taylor has a number of shows in Japan next week. And the last show, I believe, is on February 10th. So they were doing math to figure out, is it possible for Taylor to make it back to Las Vegas in time for the Super Bowl? And it turns out if the show ends around 11 or 12, the flight back, I think they said it was roughly 17 hours or so, give or take a little bit. And they believe that Taylor will be able to arrive in Las Vegas Saturday night around 8 or 9 p.m. So should be able to make it to the game on Sunday. So Taylor should be able to make it there, guys. Hmm. Uh, video is telling me that uh, Bob Weir looks like Heimer Dinger. Uh, I, I don't know that character, but that that is what you you're said saying. it so confidently. I'm surprised you don't know it. <laughs> Sold it well. Stop, t- stop talking to Dan directly, yeah. please. Wait, can I ask you a question, <laughs> I do see though? The this is like the fourth though. time I've asked. This guy is 76 years old, okay? 76 years old. He was part of the acid test, okay? They would sit around, take acid, they'd play music, get creative, come up with music. He has taken so many tabs of acid, so many mushrooms, so many drinks, smoked so much pot, and at the age of 76, does he not look good after all of that? I mean, he looks What's 106. <laughs> His face looks uh, a little bit crooked. His mouth looks a bit crooked. Uh, just there's a lot. He looks like a Dr. Seuss character. He does. He looks like a who. <laughs> he was on Supodity, I think, last year, the year before. When Stugatz accidentally broke some news with Ugh, him. Bit of a yammer. <laughs> Guy can talk, man. Talk, trying really to get him on God Bless this week. Please though. don't. I'm trying. Don't not. Do Why? That. Let's have him on the show. <laughs> what is Dan going to ask Bob Weir? <laughs> you want him on? Uh, not, Let's do it. Not After hearing him talk, I understood why their songs are 30 minutes long. <laughs> His songs, his songs also yammer. <laughs> put put it on the poll, Juju, sure. sure. at Lebetard <laughs> Show. Does do Bob Weir's songs also yammer? Who do you guys like? Come on, oh, you don't like Taylor Swift. You don't like Bob Weir. Get out of here. The only thing America likes today in unison is field goals. You should have kicked him, Dan Campbell. <laughs> Everybody agrees. All of a sudden, we've got a place in sports where everyone agrees. Jessica, it's you and me over to the side, being like. Why is everyone? Why does everyone want Dan Campbell now to be cowardly? Dan, we're disappointed because we fell in love with Dan Campbell. We fell in love with this Lions team. If the Lions can do it, any team has hope, right? They became America's team. And so I think some of the frustration that you're getting today as it relates to Dan Campbell, there are certainly arguments that, you know, Campbell, you know, he stuck to what he did to get the Lions to the NFC Championship game. 
But the argument you're hearing is how badly people wanted the Lions That's what's to make happening. it to the Super Bowl. That is what's happening. Yes. And so, therefore, we all agree. I wanted to see the kicker more. <laughs>